discovered living in filth, dogs raised for a lucrative trade. Terrified and shaken. We couldn't understand why these dogs are kept in these conditions. There is one Labrador dog being enclosed in here at present. Tonight, we investigate puppy farming in Wales. Of the complaints we get from the general public, 75% are about Welsh puppies. I've never seen anything that's worse than that. Will casualties of the trade find a better life? And will a new law be enough to stamp out bad practice? Rural Wales and the setting for a trade which is worth millions of pounds a year. Dog breeding is big business. People will pay hundreds, even thousands, for the right one. But we've been looking behind the small ads and the pet shops to find out where some of these pups start their lives. It's estimated that at least 20,000 puppies a year are bred in licensed kennels across Wales. It's a regulated trade, but there's another side to it. This farm in rural Ceredigion has been supplying pups to dealers who sell around Britain. Last autumn, animal welfare campaigners filmed this. The stench was unbelievable. It was putrid. The dogs were living on top of, of decomposing feces, sawdust, urine, and it, it was appalling. No food, no water. The, uh, some of the pens were very small. Veronica Lambert runs Puppy Love Campaigns. They're against puppy farming and want dog breeding laws to be tightened. Our campaign is to raise public awareness to the plight of puppy farm dogs and how much they suffer and to just let the public know what's going on and try and put pressure on the powers that be to change the situation. This is the man who owned the dogs, prize-winning cattle farmer Derek Davis. Because he was selling more than four litters of pups a year, he should have applied for a breeding licence from his local council. Animal welfare officers would have monitored care and conditions. There were 94 adult dogs and pups on the farm. He was running an unlicensed business. There is no excuse on this earth that he can make to us for why he treated those dogs as he did. Almost 300 miles away from the farm, this is the West Sussex coast. It's where one of the pups bred by Derek Davis ended up after being handed over to a dog rescue charity. Gail Parsons helps to rehome unwanted cocker spaniels. She fosters them alongside her own dogs. A lady rang me up and said um, she'd got um, a puppy that needed rehoming. She was six months old. Um, her marriage had broken up. She'd got four children, couldn't cope. She'd already got another dog as well. So I went round, um, saw Miley, and I brought her home here. A receipt showed that Miley had been bought for £400 from a puppy seller in Essex. We had a bill of sale from the lady in Essex and we had the vaccination card and it had the name of the breeder on the vaccination card um, because that had come from Wales. We've discovered that by the time Gail took Miley in, the puppy had been sold three times from dealer to dealer. Gail had serious concerns about Miley's health. She couldn't run normally with the other dogs. A local vet diagnosed a condition called hip dysplasia. These are Miley's hips. On the right side, the, the ball of the ball and socket is actually out of the joint. And so with every step, that head of the femur is knocking out of socket. On the left hand side, I could easily pull it out of joint under an anaesthetic. And so I'm sure that with every step it was clunking in and out of joint. 
It's one of the severest cases I've seen in a puppy of that age, certainly of that breed. It coped by bunny hopping, and I'm sure it wasn't in abject agony every hour of every day, but it was never what you call comfortable. It's awfully sad, it's dreadfully, dreadfully sad. They had to make a difficult decision. It would have cost more than £4,000 for hip replacement surgery with no guarantees of success. That amount of money on one dog is a, you know, it's a real lot of money. When it came down to it, you had to weigh up how much that money could do for a number of dogs as opposed to just one dog. We had to put down. Which was a shame because she was a lovely little dog. Puppy Love decided to investigate Miley's story and headed for Keradigion. On October the 27th last year, a member visited Derek Davis's farm. He's tucked away in, you know, out in the back of beyond. Our members drove in to see if they could see Mr. Davis, and uh, there was no one there. There were dogs on the yard in an outside enclosure. Uh, it was absolutely covered in feces. There were dogs in a barn too, and in the back of a disused lorry trailer. Hello. They filmed some dogs without clean drinking water. And there was a basset hound with eye problems. Well, we needed to get them help, and we needed to get them help quickly. So the RSPCA were informed immediately. The RSPCA told us it passes on complaints about commercially bred animals to local authorities to investigate, to avoid damaging any potential prosecutions. Two days later, Keradigion council officials turned up. It's not clear to what extent conditions changed in the two days between Puppy Love's visit and Keradigion council officials turning up at the farm, but they reported finding dogs in overcrowded kennels, some filled with excrement. Some had no food and dirty water. Officials noted some dogs had eye problems and overgrown claws. The officials didn't call a vet. They didn't think it necessary. Instead, they issued improvement notices, ordering Derek Davis to clean up immediately, which he did. He also removed some of the dogs. Rory! This dog was removed. Derek Davis asked his vet to put it down. Good boy, Rory. Good boy. He also asked him to destroy the Basset Hound, which he'd owned for just over a week. It had been having treatment for eye problems. But the dogs had been given a reprieve, thanks to the Hope Rescue Charity. But one of our foster homes had a call from her local vet to say that a puppy farmer had brought two dogs in that needed to be destroyed, um, and the vet felt that they didn't actually need to be destroyed, so asked if we could step in and help. The Basset Hound, named Gracie, was suffering glaucoma and a condition called cherry eye. She needed surgery before she could be rehomed. Hope Rescue is paying for her treatment. We hoped to save Grace's eye initially, um, and, we, and we, we treated the um, with eye drops, but it was clear eventually that the eye had ruptured and it was so serious we actually had to remove one of Grace's eyes. The Labrador, named Roly, appeared to have health problems too. He was obviously very underweight and very small for his age, but the foster home quite quickly picked up that there was obviously a problem with his back end as well. He also came in with a very, very nasty um, cough that we subsequently found out was due to, to lungworm. Roly has hip problems. It's too soon to know how severe, but he may need surgery in the future. Hope Rescue has agreed to fund future treatments which could run into thousands of pounds. Our volunteers will be out every weekend rattling tins outside supermarkets to raise this money. It could take us months and months of rattling tins to raise the money to cover these, these vet fees. I took Puppy Love's footage to the veterinary director of Britain's biggest dog welfare charity. 
Chris Lawrence has been a government advisor on animal welfare issues. What would he make of conditions at the farm? I mean, well, just the whole place is horrible, isn't it? It's just the level of, of hygiene that there is. There's faeces all over the place. Filthy water, um, so inadequate facilities completely. Um, and those dogs uh, will be affected by that. That is, that is an offence under the Animal Welfare Act to behave like that and to keep dogs like that. Should have water available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But you, know, it's, it, it just, you get the impression that the whole place is just disgustingly filthy and I, I hate to think what it would smell like. You've had a glimpse then of some really dirty, filthy water. I mean, you are a, a vet of, of, of decades of experience. How bad do you think this is? Um, I've never seen anything that's worse than that. Uh, I've been to some pretty grotty places in my time, um, but I've never seen anything worse than that. Keradigion Council prosecuted Derek Davis for breeding dogs without a licence. He wasn't prosecuted for animal welfare offences because he'd cleaned up after the dogs were found by officials. The Act is such that if you serve an improvement notice, then a prosecution under those sections is not possible unless the notice is not complied with. And in this instance, the notice was complied with. Under existing law, in circumstances like this, a local authority's hands are tied. We're meant to be a nation of dog lovers, but every year rehoming centres like this in Bridgend are inundated with hundreds of dogs who were unwanted for all sorts of reasons. One of the classic ones I had was a lady and gentleman had bought a pedigree Yorkie and they brought it in at eight weeks old because its poo smelt. You are joking? No. And we hear, it, it's the wrong colour, it doesn't match my carpet anymore or it grew too big. Staff don't know who dumped these Westy bitches, but they suspect they're from a puppy farm. This is Sweetie. Uh, Sweetie came in with Molly. Um, they came in as strays or from a pound, uh, but obviously looking at her appearance gives us belief that she is a puppy farm dog. Puppy farm dogs, it's the behaviour, but quite often it is the physical condition as well. So in her case, what she's got is um, atopy, so this is allergies. Her back was all black, and then she had red patches as well, where she'd actually been chewing away at herself. She was in so much discomfort. But this is long-term neglect. This is a dog that's been left for a long period of time. What do you think her life would have been like? Miserable. Both have had pups. Bitches like Molly and Sweetie could potentially produce several thousand pounds worth of litters for a breeder. <laughs> Wales produces an estimated five million pounds worth of puppies a year through licensed breeders who were compliant and regulated. The Welsh Assembly Government recognises that there are problems in some parts of the commercial dog breeding industry in Wales. That's why it wants to change the law. It wants to tighten regulations in the future so that all puppies are microchipped, so that the number of litters that a bitch can have over her lifetime is limited, and it wants to give local councils more powers to clamp down on bad practice. But more legislation means more work for local authorities, and it's their officials who police this industry. Licensed dog breeders are inspected at least once a year by animal welfare officers. At Pembrokeshire Council, Nigel Watts and his colleagues monitor around 20 across the county. And they know that if they look after their dogs, then it does well for their business, and they've got a reputation to look after. You know, they've got a, a, an interest in the dog's that they keep, and um, yeah, they breed to a very, very high standard. Uh, this is one of the dogs that an improvement notice was issued on. But there's one breeder, Marion Williams, who they've been investigating for more than two years. What are those worms? She's never been one of our best breeders, but she's always met licensing conditions. In 2008, standards uh, were slipping. They refused to license her kennels in February 2009 after finding dogs in these conditions. They ordered improvements, 
But a few days later, after a tip-off about poor conditions, they turned up again without warning. Mrs Williams ran off uh, at the rear of her former licence kennels to uh, a cattle shed that the officers hadn't been in before and had no reason to go there, uh, and opened the door and let out uh, five dogs. There's one Labrador dog being enclosed in here at present. This is the voice of an animal welfare officer. Very strong smell of ammonia, urine and faeces dotted around the shed, uh, many of which are uh, covered in uh, mould. There is a selection of bowls put together which are completely dry. There is no hint of water in them. Marion Williams had previously been warned about conditions in another building. And here we have little Shih Tzu, which I believe to be the same one we've seen on the last three occasions. Um, still behind its bed. Terrified and shaking. Fresh mouse droppings in among the food in the corners. Mrs Williams was charged with animal welfare offences and ordered to make immediate improvements. Eventually, she was re-licensed and continued selling puppies to dealers, but she lost it again when new licensing breaches were found. When Mrs Williams came to court, she did, in fact, plead guilty to offences under the Animal Welfare Act. Um, she was fined, um, she was fined two and a half thousand pounds with a thousand pounds costs, and the magistrates decided to ban her from uh, keeping dogs for 12 months. Mrs Williams uh, put in an appeal to the Crown Court but against the ban, the 12-month ban. And that was in August of last year, 2010, and that matter still hasn't been decided in front of the Crown Court. Last month, she was back in court again, this time for breeding dogs without a licence. She had denied it, but was convicted and fined. We've try to get the, the dogs taken from Mrs Williams and there's only so much uh, that you, you, we can do. Until the court decides whether to enforce the ban, Marion Williams can keep the dogs and Nigel and his team have to keep away. It's very frustrating for, for us. You know, we've got uh, dogs in Mrs Williams' care and there's no supervision. Um, there's no one checking on, uh, on what she's doing with these dogs and how she's looking after them. Marion Williams didn't want to be interviewed, but told us the 40 dogs she has are well cared for. She intends to fight the ban and wants to continue breeding puppies. There are 400 licensed commercial breeders in Wales, but there are far more who do it on a much smaller scale. I'm going to meet some of them. Passes have come for crests. If new breeding legislation is introduced, council inspectors may be monitoring homes like this. The Richardson family from Bridgend have been breeding and showing champion Sky Terriers and Cheskies for more than 30 years. They're not sort of dogs kept separately, they're all part of the family. They give you unconditional love. They rarely breed from their dogs, but because they own five bitches, they'll need to be licensed and monitored in the same way as large-scale commercial breeders. Colin organised a petition against the proposed changes. As far as the commercial breeders are concerned, it's a cash crop. It's, a, it's, an, it's an alternative to wheat, barley, cattle, sheep. These are our, our pets. They're our pets first. And, uh, and then we show our pets, and they show dogs. More than 800 people signed the petition. Like Colin, they're not convinced that Welsh councils will be able to police potentially hundreds more dog breeders. If you're going to make a law, it's got to be operable. And yes, we, we would love to have the law tightened up but, and, and to improve the welfare of dogs. No, make no mistake about that. But unless that is taken in conjunction with an increase in staffing levels, as I said, the increase in resources, then it, 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 it's, it's a paper tiger. The new law is aimed at preventing scenes like this in puppy farms by setting stricter welfare standards and staffing levels. But will council inspectors be able to enforce it?
The Welsh Local Government Association represents councils. It's warning that the new law will come at a price. If local authorities don't have the appropriate resource to do the work, especially if the numbers of businesses uh, will increase as a result of the drafting of that legislation, it will be difficult for local authorities to be able to adequately cover all of the, the, those new businesses. It will be down to the local authorities individually to prioritise their budgets, um, but I probably am sceptical that uh, this type of work would be seen as a priority in the greater scheme of things. Since 2008, Welsh councils have identified 117 unlicensed breeders, but there have been only 13 prosecutions for licensing and animal welfare offences. Prosecutions are seen very much as a last resort. They're saved for the, the very worst cases. Uh, council enforcement staff are very much uh, focused on working with businesses to achieve compliance. So in the first instance, they'll, they'll approach the businesses and try to work with them to bring them to a state where they would be in compliance with the legislation, which then wouldn't necessarily need to take further into a prosecution. In the weeks following the discovery of Derek Davis's unlicensed puppy farm, the RSPCA inspected it. Keredigion Council carried out five spot checks and another with a vet. So why, on the 21st of December, was he granted a licence to keep 12 breeding bitches? At that particular time, the conditions at the premises were such to warrant the issue of the licence. He's kept dogs uh, in filthy conditions. Some of them had eye problems. Some of them didn't have food. They had dirty water. And then he gets the thumbs up from the council. That was the case when the initial inspections were undertaken. Subsequently, following the improvements undertaken as a result of the action by the council, improvements were secured and at the time that the inspection was undertaken for the premises for licensing purposes, everything was sufficient to, re to, to, to uh, reach the conclusion that granting the license was warranted. At the end of January, a puppy love supporter returned. No one from the council had been back to the farm since licensing it five weeks earlier. We needed to put our own minds at rest and go back and see what conditions were like after license. This time, a member of our team went along to see how the dogs were being looked after. No one lives at the farm. By law, no one has to in order to look after the dogs. Derek Davis has a full-time job. The kennels were not locked. There were Labrador puppies in a pen with no food or water. This Bassett bitch had young pups, but hardly anything to drink. According to Keradigion's licensing regulations, dogs must have a constant supply of clean water. They're also meant to have adequate, clean bedding. There are five Basset pups in this particular pen. One of them clearly has some sort of an eye infection. The water is absolutely filthy. And there's an awful lot of uh, feces in the pen as well. We took our latest evidence to vet Chris Lawrence. So, Chris, this has been given, in a sense, a public stamp of approval, mm -hmm. a licensed dog breeding establishment. I mean, they've made some effort to clean the place up, um, but that, I, if, if I were going as a vet, I would not license that. That's not an acceptable standard. It's inexcusable. There is no, no conceivable excuse for keeping dogs like that. Full stop. Now that they've given them a license, unfortunately, they can't take it away under the current legislation, unless they prosecute them. And I don't think they'd be able to prosecute them, because although it's bad, I don't think it's bad enough to make that stick under the, under the licensing legislation. What they can do is to issue improvement notices. I think the public will be horrified to hear you say, well, it's bad, but it's not bad enough. Where I think it is bad enough for a potential prosecution is the duty of care under the Animal Welfare Act, which is much broader, which essentially says if you keep an animal, you've got to keep it properly. I don't think that's keeping dogs properly. The problem is that whereas the local authority has a duty to enforce the breeding legislation, they have no duty to enforce the Animal Welfare Act. 
two weeks after we filmed this. Puppy Love asked the RSPCA to check on the dogs. An inspector found no welfare problems, nor did a council official on March the 3rd. On March the 7th, Derek Davis appeared at Aberystwyth Magistrates Court and admitted breeding dogs without a licence. The court heard he'd sold 28 puppies for up to £120 each. He admitted that for a short period last October he had failed to clean the kennels properly because of temporary domestic difficulties. But he insisted the dogs had been fed, watered and exercised regularly. He said he had misunderstood the breeding laws and had meant to apply for a licence. He was fined £280 and ordered to pay £800 costs. So what would the council make of our new evidence? From a humane point of view, are you satisfied that what's happening at that farm it still deserves the council's official seal of approval? Well, you, you say you've got the evidence, that evidence. We haven't seen that evidence. I, we have no record of receiving any complaint for, in relation to Mr Davis's premises subsequent to licensing. If, as you say, you have the evidence, then please let us have a look at that evidence and we will look at it. So will you be monitoring Derek Davis more closely in the future? I, I, th I think given the, the circumstances here, the fact that um, there has been an improvement notice served, um, I think, yes, we would be considering him as a high-risk premises until it's shown otherwise to us. Derek Davis didn't want to be interviewed about our evidence, but in a statement denied mistreating his dogs. He said they had all been fed, watered and exercised daily. That a vet who examined them said they appeared in good bodily health, well fed and watered. That the pups with eye problems were receiving treatment. He said he had been unaware of Miley or Rowley's hip problems. The Assembly Government is still considering exactly how to change the dog breeding laws. It will be for the newly elected government to decide. But there's a warning. To stop puppy-farmed dogs ending up in rescue centres, politicians will have to do more than make promises. You can have the best legislation in the world. If it's not properly enforced, it is of no value at all. So, what happened to the dogs who were rescued from the trade? Molly and Sweetie have now been found new homes. And Gracie and Rowley are still recovering, thanks to charity. Grace is already in a home, in an absolutely lovely home, so very, very happy outcome for, for Gracie. Roly, hopefully he's going to have a good future as well now and he'll be able to live the, the life of a, of a happy dog that each and every dog's entitled to. We pick up the pieces and those that are responsible for it go on ahead still making money.